Thank you for joining us. Make sure to join me next time, however, when I take a look at Mega Man 9. Well, better late than never. What kind of reviews can I do for this channel? Now, I do know that recently I posted in the community chat that we were working on retrospectives for Streets of Rage 4 and Tales of the Arise. Now, I promise those are coming. It just, you know, life gets in the way. We need a little bit more time, but they will be showing up on the channel soon. In the meantime, I was reviewing the backlog of our channel where I came across our old Mega Man reviews. And I figured, hey, why not complete them? We only got a couple more left. So, first up, is Mega Man 9. I say 9 even though this is actually the 10th entry in the main series, which includes Mega Man Bass. Speaking of which, fans would have to wait 10 years between the release of that game and this one, as Capcom shifted its focus to other titles during the early 2000s. Then after 9 and 10 came out, fans would have to wait again until 2018 until Capcom released Mega Man 11. It seems like that's the trend now, Capcom waiting almost a decade to release new Mega Man titles. Well, I guess absence makes the heart grow fonder. Anyway, let's jump in and see what Mega Man 9 has to offer. In 2008, Capcom, along with Intercrates, would present Mega Man 9, an originally downloadable only title, and in every sense of the word, a retro throwback to the old school days of the series. The producers of this game, which include the now infamous KJ Inafune, wanted this game to be as simple as possible, down to its graphics, sound, music, and controls. Essentially, they were looking at Mega Man 2 as inspiration for this release. They even made a box art cover that was awesomely bad, basically a reference to the first American cover of Mega Man 1. Pretty cute. When it comes to the presentation of this game, well, that's exactly what we get. A game that would easily fit into that era of Mega Man. Now to some fans, this may have been a bit disappointing, since Mega Man had been rocking an updated look since Mega Man 7. I also don't know how this would fly nowadays if they went back to this old retro look for the eventual Mega Man 12, considering how good he looked in Mega Man 11. But for someone like me who instantly thinks of this classic design when I think of Mega Man, I really had no issues with it. It's like going through my closet and slipping on an old shirt that still fits. It's nice and comfortable. The 8-bit look never really gets old. In fact, I wouldn't mind if Nintendo made a new Mario game that returned to this classic NES style, at least for one entry. So the look does go back a couple of decades, but the story does progress forward from where we left off. Now in Mega Man 9, we find ourselves in the early 21st century, which is today! A group of robot masters run amok and are causing destruction, and the main culprit is Mega Man's creator Dr. Light? Yeah, the good doctor even gets arrested for these crimes. Now, of course, no one is buying this, as he's obviously getting framed. I mean, Otto even says straight up that this must be the work of Dr. Wily. Even Mega Man himself is like, yeah, no shit. Mega Man must first face off against the eight robot masters, which this time includes Concrete Man, Magma Man, Hornet Man, Jewel Man, Tornado Man, Plug Man, Galaxy Man, and Splash Woman? Hey, we finally get a female robot master. Only took about ten tries. Now during these battles, Mega Man comes across some evidence that proves Light's innocence. It turns out that Dr. Wily is the cause of the uprising, as he did convince the robot masters to turn on their human creators. These robots are past their expiration dates, and they were scheduled to be decommissioned. Man, that's actually kind of rough and sad when you think about it. These robots were constructed to help humanity, but once they reach their arbitrary date, they are sent to the scrap heap without a second thought. No wonder the poor things revolted. Now, I know this is probably not the intention of the developers, but it does make me think if this plants the seed for what happens to the Mavericks in the Mega Man X series, in which robots would start to turn on humanity. It is an interesting thought at least. 
If there were a ton of robots being created to do everyday tasks, would they have their own rights? Or would they be trapped by the whims of their human overlords? Isn't that becoming a race? And won't we be judged by how we treat that race? Well, in any event, Mega Man defeats them and heads to Wily's castle. And at this point, you should know the deal. You defeat a few Wily stages, you do a final boss rush, and you take down Dr. Wily himself. Afterwards, we see a funny scene in which Wily is begging for forgiveness, only for Mega Man to show him a slideshow of all his failures from the past. Wily then takes Mega Man to Dr. Light, but as the blue bomber is about to release him, it turns out to be a fake. Mega Man is knocked out. Wily escapes, leaving Mega Man to die, until he's saved at the last second by Proto Man. In the end, Dr. Light is cleared of all charges, the eight robot masters are rebuilt and given new functions, and Wily disappears, destined to return to wreak havoc another day. Overall, I do dig the story. It shows Dr. Wily trying something new in order to get the robots on his side as he continues his quest to try to take over the world, and the story does manage to add some more world building to the Mega Man lore. That being said, it does feel like it's only part one of the story, with Wily getting away scot-free in the end. Still, it's not nearly as frustrating as Mega Man 4's ending. As for the gameplay, well, it's very classic Mega Man. You jump, and you shoot, and you... you... Huh. Wait. Where's my charge shot and slide ability? What do you mean they aren't here? Now, when they said they wanted this game to feel like Mega Man 2, they were not kidding, as the charge shot and the slide ability would not become available till later on in the series. But still, I like those maneuvers! I use them all the time. Oh well, at least this game brings back the E-Tanks that can fill up your energy. You can pick them up along with other items like extra lives and screws, which are used as this game's currency. In between stages, you can go to Auto Shop, where you can exchange the screws for helpful items to assist you on your adventure. Now, as usual, there's a screen select, so you can choose which robot masters you want to fight in order that you please. You make your choice, you go through the level, and you fight the boss. After you defeat him, you gain a new ability that you can use. Also, keep in mind that the robot masters have specific weaknesses that you can exploit to make their confrontations a little easier. Now, for me, I like to start off with Galaxy Man, as I could beat him pretty easily with my regular Buster Cannon. And then afterwards, I use his black hole bomb to take out Jewel Man. Also, I just like to say that the powers that you get from the robot masters in this game absolutely rock. They are so useful in battle. The before mentioned black hole bomb can suck up nearby enemies, while Tornado Man's Tornado Blow can be used as a screen nuke to take care of some pesky enemies. And I'm just mentioning a couple. There's a ton of great uses you can use with these powers throughout the game. And last but not least, there's also your faithful robot dog companion, Rush. He starts off with the Rush Coil that can use to reach higher places, and later on gets an upgrade to the Rush Jet to help you pass by some hard obstacles. Now whether or not you like this game, however, really depends on the stages themselves, because like I said, this game is old school with its approach, and some of the areas in this game can get frustrating if downright cruel, with their tight jumps, spikes, and BS enemy placement and good old-fashioned knockback. Damn it! Also, not all the levels are created equal. I had a fairly easy time with Magma Man stage, but Tornado Man stage was a pain in the ass. I love weather effects, don't you? The Wily Castle also features some fresh set of challenges in which you'll have to use the powers that you've collected in order to make it through to the end. Oh, and also, by the way, this final boss in stage one of Wily's Castle can go straight to hell. Anyway, I digress. How's the music in this game? Well, as usual, Mega Man 9 features a great video game soundtrack that was composed by several Capcom veterans, including Ippo Yamada. Here are a few of my favorite tracks.
and how do I feel about this game? Well, I do not consider Mega Man 9 to be one of my personal favorite Mega Man games, but it's still a fun time, especially if you love the classic series. I know I complained a little about the challenge earlier, but honestly, it's really not impossible. While I do miss the charge shot and slide abilities, the stages were constructed around them not being there, so they didn't feel cheap. They can be frustrating, but they are doable. The classic look and sound effects have a charm that's all their own. And like I said, the 8-bit graphics just never gets old, especially for old-timers like myself. So if you enjoyed Mega Man 2, then I say this one is definitely up your alley. I also am aware that there was DLC that came out for this game that allowed you to play as Proto Man. Unfortunately, I did not have access to it. But something tells me I'm going to get my Proto Man fix in the next Mega Man game that I review. In the meantime, I am Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and visit our Teespring store for some cool TBOG merch. We'll see you next time, and as always, keep on gaming.